Okay, so we've now downloaded the uh, La Jolla Precipitation Monthly file. Hopefully, uh, for those of you following on YouTube, you've been able to get GitHub to work. And uh, so we now have this file, La Jolla Precip Monthly, in the data folder, which is at the same level as the lessons folder that we're currently in. Um, so we go up one to data and then um, to this file. We're going to do a few things to this file. We're going to um, convert the date field to a date time object or timestamp object. We're going to um, um, get the mean um, values for this uh, by date because there are some duplicate dates. We are going to um, add a column for month and for year using um, the month and year properties of the the indexes which are which are timestamps and then we're going to reset the index so there's a lot that we're doing here um, that you can maybe after class you can look at this and figure out what's going on um, for the purpose of today we want to talk about statistics so we're not going to delve into the pandas and the timestamp type features of, of what's going on here. Oh god. Oh, I need to I need to <laughs> uh, I need to add it to my folder. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna copy this from let's do the same thing since um, this is the GitHub local uh, this is the local version of the GitHub on my computer. Okay. Okay, and then we can examine that that data frame. So what this data frame should look like is for each date, which is a this is the first day of the month, we should have a latitude, a longitude, uh, an elevation, uh, and most importantly, a precipitation, a month, and a year. So the main the main items that we're going to look at are the precipitation precipitation data which is um, summed over the month so this is a little different than what you're looking at in your assignment which is daily daily uh, accumulation and then what we did was we pulled out the month number and the year number from this from this date object um, so we can first of all we can explore the data using a plot we can um, just plot the precipitation versus versus date here and because it's a date time object, pandas will will know that these are you know these are dates, and it will plot them plot the year numbers down here. So we can see how precipitation is maximal around December or January every year, which is typical for for the San Diego area. And just in case we want to make make sure that the um, data are sequential. Since we're plotting here by date and here by index, we're gonna, we can make the same plot by index as our x-axis. Um, and this, um, this will be, this will come in handy in a minute and we'll, we'll see how we're using that index value for some of the statistics. We can um, use this describe function to describe the statistics of each column. So let's say we want to look at precipitation. We can get the mean precipitation for for these months, um, the standard deviation, etc. I believe these data are in uh, millimeters, which is different than, um, than what you guys had. I think it's inches in what the assignment uh, has. So, but we can also get that mean information by doing df.prcp, which is this, this is a series and this is the mean of that series. And we can get the uh, the standard deviation or the uh, the quantile, which is right the we can get the 25th percentile, the 50th percentile, or the 75th percentile. This is just a different way to get the same information that we got in describe. But of course, you could specify any period in that. 
uh, any percentile that you wanted. You can get the, the minimum, and this is the um, index of the minimum. This is a really handy um, function, so you can say, okay, what was the minimum precipitation? Well, there's actually many minima where there's many months where there was zero precipitation, so there's many corresponding in indexes. Um, and uh, here we can get the max. So there was one month where there was a maximum of 166 millimeters. Um, we also can use this round function if we want, and then we can um, get the index of that. And these are just showing up as a it's showing up as a tuple because when we enter these things separated by commas, that's just how it represents them. But it's just a way for us to quickly, you know, print off the values of, of several things at once. Um, I'm just gonna, um, for some reason, my output didn't, I didn't clear the output properly when I did it before, so I'm just gonna um, restart my kernel here and clear the output. I don't actually have to clear all the output, but I will. And then I can do run all above. Okay. Okay. So now you won't see what's. It'll be more of a surprise this way when I when we execute the cells. Um, so uh, cumulative sum is a cool one. So you can see. Um, so in month zero. So this was December two thousand eight. There was one hundred and twelve millimeters of precipitation, and then in January there were seven. Etc. So it's it's giving us the cumulative sum across this. So this this could be useful for for certain applications. Um, a really really useful one um, that we've we've seen before, but is is value counts. So this just gives you the um, the number of times that each unique value is observed in that series. For numerical data like this, it's 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 fine. You know, you can see there were 16 months where there was zero millimeters. There was um, one month where there was uh, 12 months where there was one millimeter. Um, you can also very quickly see that all the values are rounded to zero, um, or it appears that there are no you know fractional values in this data set. And um, you can see that some of these other you know values are are more you know, there's only one month where there was exactly three millimeters, for example. Um, this is a really great way to just get a quick picture of a, a series. Like if you um, have NAND values or if, you have, if you're only expecting there to be a few different values, you can quickly get the distribution of that sample. So that's some of the basic um, statistics you can do with pandas. Uh, next, we're going to look at regression analysis. Um, we've seen already that with Seaborn, we can do a, uh, uh, there's LM plot, which uses that facet grid type figure um, situation, whereas uh, reg plot is a more basic just regression plot. So here we're plotting uh, this data frame that we have, and the x-axis is month and the y-axis is precipitation, and it's a first order i.e. a line um, polynomial. Whereas if we wanted to use a second order polynomial, we can set order equals two, and you can see that this is giving us a, a better fit to the data. Um, but Seaborn gives these really handy plots, but it doesn't provide an easy way to get the underlying coefficients that are calculated. So for doing real statistics, you probably want to use um, NumPy or SciPy or some other statistics packages. It's, it's, C1's more of a, a quick, quick way to to generate a plot, but but the underlying um, statistics, it's it's better to use something else. So uh, with NumPy, we have this uh, polyfit function. So if we wanted to fit a first order line, a, a polynomial, we can run this n uh, NumPy dot polyfit function on the month and the precipitation, and that will give us the slope and the intercept of that line. 
we can then plot the data and then plot the line on the same the same plot. This is just using the quick and dirty matplotlib um, notation. We're not doing any um, subplot here, although we will in a minute. Um, so one thing you can see is that um, with this line, there's the 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 fit is kind of jagged, and the, the reason is because those months uh, change every for every row in our data frame. We're going from month, you know, it starts at month twelve, and then one, two, three, four, five, and then it's going back, and it's, so it's plotting that in order, and it ends up giving us kind of an ugly looking line. So if we sort the values in that data frame by month, and then um, that doesn't affect the scatter plot, but it does affect the, the plot of this line, we get a, a prettier looking line. So that's what's going on there. Um, we can also fit to a, a second order polynomial. So we're doing the same fit here. And um, so now we have three coefficients. Um, and we can um, we can also generate a we want to plot this line we want to have a nice finely spaced um, um, array to plot this line or this curve actually so we can now um, so we now have this uh, this array from from one to twelve that's evenly spaced we can now use this uh, NumPy function called um, polyval, which takes the polynomial coefficients that we generated with polyfit. So this is 1.68 times x squared minus 21.1 times x plus 67, right? It's a polynomial. We can then apply that to x1 and generate y1. So this is now the corresponding y-coordinates to those x-coordinates that we've used this function to, to generate. And then we can plot the scatter and plot the curve of that polynomial fit. Um, so we can do the same thing with a third order polynomial, etc. So this is just an example of how we, how we might want to fit the data. Um, We'll see in a minute how we can use a, uh, actually right now we'll see how you can use a sine wave to do the same thing because of course um, there's these January and December are not separate from each other, they're right next to each other. So we might want to show the dates on a continuum. So uh, here we're, we're going to do, we're going to create a sine wave and then fit it to the data and, and then adjust. We're going to have some starting parameters for our, for our sine wave and then we can adjust it to fit the data a, a little better. So we're going to start with a period of, of 4 pi, a frequency of uh, 2 pi uh, divided by the, that period of 4 pi, um, a phase 0, amplitude 0.5, an offset of 1, and then we're going to generate the x and the y coordinates for that curve. So um, we just generate the x coordinates, and then we can generate the the y coordinates using the sine function of the x coordinate, the frequency, the phase, the amplitude, and the offset. And then we can plot the um, first. We'll make subplots. We can plot x uh, y versus x. We can plot. Uh, the x ticks and the x tick la labels using uh, the LaTeX, so we can get get it to show up like pi. So I won't um, I won't go through all of the trigonometry that's underlying this. You can go back to your high school pre-algebra textbook, but uh, effectively this generates a sine wave that has the the various um, parameters that we set up. And uh, here's where we're going to use that numerical uh, index. And we're going to make sure that we 
sort it again because we just previously sorted it by month. We want to go back and sort it by index. So we're going to we have now numerical indexes corresponding to the data points in our data set. Um, this will be useful because because of the the sine wave situation. So uh, we're going to sort in place by index, and we can see that we now have sorted by index again. We're going to plot a scatter plot of the index and the precipitation, and um, we're going to have x ticks every 12 months. So each of these is uh, December of, of, of the year. And then we can we want to store that index as as a as a the uh, array T and store the data uh, precipitation data as something called data. Um, and then we're going to start with uh, we're going to change the parameters now of our sine wave. We're going to have a, a new sine wave that's going to have a period of twelve, which is it should have right. We're going to guess the, the, the frequency, um, guess the, the phase, guess the amplitude, and guess the offset. And then we're going to, um, we're going to have this function that represents a sine wave. So this is the same type function that we had before, but this having the function as a, as a um, defined in this way allows us to use the, the fitting uh, capability of, of SciPy. So we're going to do SciPy um, optimize curve fit and then we're going to use the sine wave, the time t, the data, and then the guess. So this is an array of all the values that will fit into this function. So um, first we're going to plot, uh, or we're going to use this to um, plot our first estimate, and then we're going to run, uh, then we're going to generate the, the data for the, the, the fit, or the, yeah, the, the, the curve fitting output. So this is just using our guess, and then this is using output of the fit and then finally we can see what all of this generated so we have our data that we plotting here we have um, the fit so this is after fitting and then um, before fitting so our first guess and we can see how um, this function has used that starting point to adjust and it gets closer to the truth where we have um, uh, and we maintain this period of, of 12 months, but we've, we've, we've sort of adjusted the, the phase. So this is, this is a kind of thing you can do with SciPy. You can, you can set up a, uh, a function that, that you think um, should capture your data, and then you can fit it. You can adjust the fit to improve, improve everything. So... Um, we can also do um, regression with, with SciPy. So um, in the last homework, you, you dealt with data on the moons from the solar system. And so we're going to have a look at that again. So I'm loading up here the moons and the planets data. Um, just realize that you need to have access to these as well. So I'll take a quick break on the video.